Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. Here we are again with Michelle Fabrega, our love and relationship coach, uh, for another uh, interesting topic, I'm sure. I don't even know what I read yet. <laughs> Michelle, welcome. Thank you. Great to be here with you both. Great to see you again. Hey, you know, uh, Celebrating Act 2 is for the second half of your life people arguably over 50. Yeah. Um, and the other day, <laughs> somebody gave me that look, a younger person, I don't think it was my daughter, I forget who it was, but they gave me that look that was kind of like, you know, act your age, you know, hey, come on, don't be so silly, act your age. And I thought to myself, it's really true, we're, you know, listen, acting your age, I see people hobbling along with walkers, you know, that's acting your age, if, if, from my point of view, but in terms of having fun and attitude and just enjoying life, um, I think a lot of younger people think <laughs> us older folks should be serious about everything. John, we were, you acting, about death were you acting? Were you acting? Were you acting young? I must have been. Were you having fun? <laughs> <laughs> I, to be real honest, I don't even know what that is anymore. I just, you know, have fun. That's my whole goal. So acting your age, what, what's so good about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think that we, a lot of us don't even realize that we have that conditioning around that. Um, first, it probably started when we we're younger and we we're told to act our age because they're trying to get us to act more mature. You know, our parents maybe are trying to get us to act more mature. But when we get older, sometimes we also have that same, you know, admonishment, right? That we we have to stop doing something or stop being silly. And I just, um, it, it's really unfortunate. And I think it's something to catch ourselves with, both when we notice it for ourselves, um, that we think, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I should be acting my age or this is, I'm too old to, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But also when we notice it about somebody else, because it's almost like there's this, um, I heard somebody talk about, time released conditioning that comes in. I mean, there are things that I've kind of looked at that I'm doing that I sh think I shouldn't be doing, but it's because I used to judge other older people when I was young, you know, it's like, <laughs> I feel guilty that I'm, that I'm, I shouldn't be doing this because I used to judge other, anyway. So it's just interesting to catch ourselves because um, th there's a re real benefit to not acting your age. <laughs> there is, what, what would that be? Yeah, well, they've done studies that um, basically the actual age that you feel is more important. You know, it's calling it maybe your subjective age, but the age you feel has significant effects on your physical health and mental health. And even it's more of a predictor of like a risk of death and other health outcomes. And they're starting to look at this, this just, you know, self-reported sense of age. And often we use age as a limiter in terms of, you know, trying new things or, you know, being active or whatever. And if we think that we're too old for something, then maybe we won't do it. And it creates that cycle, right? That vicious cycle of, of, sure. of stopping, of whatever, slowing down, not doing something that maybe we ought to go for. It sure. seems to me that um, uh, the, this framework of somebody who's over 50 uh, is more often than not used by younger people about older people, particularly women who, let's say, are dressing in a, a, a very young uh, a way, in, in a way that maybe was appropriate in their minds for the 20 yeah. or 30 set. Uh, and, it, you know, it depends, I guess, on the individual and how they pull it off. But if, if in their brain it makes them feel good, who, who's hurting? What, what, is it hurting anybody? As long as you feel good about it, who cares? Yeah. Yeah, totally. And um, and I think even that, you know, I mean, we all have you know, this whole age appropriate or even is it appropriate? It's like, let's, I mean, what's underneath that word? Like, let's really look at what that means to us and who said and why. And, you know, these are all things that were kind of installed in us, you know, through our upbringing in our minds. And um, it's really I think it's really important to question it because you know, I mean, I did some crazy studies. I was if, when researching this topic, which I'm super excited about, as you can tell. But like, you know, what is the oldest? It's, when should you stop like wearing a bikini? You know, and one study, oh, 46, you know, or when should you stop wearing sneakers? You know, 49, visiting a nightclub, 44, you know, these ages, um, using yeah. dating apps, 52. It's like, <laughs> anyway, it's just interesting that these are like kind of the common 
sense that people have and, you know, different studies here, whatever. But um, the idea that it's really good to, like I said, look at that and catch yourself because one thing, you know, for sure, there's going to be things that, you know, oh, no, I'm too old for that. And I think it's always important to, to look a little further, like, you know, where did this come from? And do I really believe that I'm too old? Like physically, I, I don't have the ability to do it. Or is it because I don't really want to? I don't have the motivation or energy. And those are all good reasons not to do something. Or, you know, my knees aren't that strong. I don't think I want to go downhill skiing again or whatever. You know, the, these can be wise choices to make. But to, to use that catch-all, you know, I'm too old or there shouldn't be doing this. It's just, I don't know. I think, yeah, like, I think we need like, to get clear with our language. <laughs> Sure. I, I like I'm supposed to do something or not supposed to do something. You know, one of the things that I've noticed over the years as I grew older um, is that men and women uh, never change in the sense that we react to this, the opposite sex in the same way we did when we were kids. And I'm talking about flirting. Mm. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're married or single. It's flirting is a, is a wonderful thing to do. Just paying somebody of the opposite sex a compliment. And I've noticed with both men and women, it works. It works wonderfully. Everybody likes <laughs> to have that little harmless flirt, a compliment or something, you know, just a wink of the eye, whatever it is, it works wonderfully. And that's not age appropriate, right? We're not dating. We're not looking to fall in love necessarily. But And the younger people look at it, you know, like, oh, get a room. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed that flirting is something that um, we should be doing all our life, I think. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I mean, I think there's a, there's some caveats in there, obviously. I mean, depending on the age of the person, maybe you're choosing the fuller earth and do they feel safe and comfortable in that situation. Sure, and, sure. Um, you know, there's the Me Too movement where people, you know, have raised the issue of being, you know, concerned about not feeling safe. So I think there's that. But I agree with you that flirting is kind of like, um, you know, if it's done well, it's kind of like just a gentle and harmless but joyful exchange. Like, I see you, you see me, happy yeah. to be alive in this moment together, noticing something, you know, in a grocery store or whatever. I think that can be a, a, a joyful thing. And it's kind of a way to um, just share something, you know, small little connection with, with a person, you know, that you don't maybe know very well and, and it's okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so, Coach, what would you... Uh advise people uh, to do uh, when they're thinking about doing something that is maybe not age appropriate? <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, you know, obviously take caution around, you know, your physical body and what you think you're able to do. Like I mentioned, the downhill skiing thing, perhaps, but, but otherwise, really ask yourself, do I want to do this? Is this still important to me? And do you know, and if you do, go for it. And, um, and if people tell you otherwise that, oh, you're too old for that, um, you know, you know, people can judge us from, there's a quote by Brene Brown, but she talks about, they can judge us from the cheap seats, but if they're not in the arena doing it with us, you know, don't listen to that kind of feedback. Don't listen to that kind of criticism and judgment and, um, and, and proceed. And, you know, together, all of us is celebrating act two, you know, we could break, the, break the mold and break the stereotype of what's age appropriate. And um, I think the world will be a better place for it. Okay, so I might take away from this is don't let them judge you from the cheap seats. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's and great, also great don't advice. judge yourself from it, right? right? Don't judge yourself for certain things there. Yep. Yeah. Get, get down in the arena. I love it. <laughs> well, Michelle, this has been wonderful. Yeah, thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.